How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Sorry, y'all ain't saw my face in a while. I'm I'm 85% getting over uh, bronchitis. You know, I'm just, and as you can see, I'm still working, still moving around, still you know getting my body physically, spiritually, you know, mentally stronger every day. But um, I still got the message, and I want to start off by saying reverence and continue and continuing to go forward and striving no matter who's around you whether they're supporting you or whether they're not so let's start with reverence reverence is basically another word for respect it's just in the upper echelon vocab of Respect. So, just like you have Toyota Camry and you have Lexus. Toyota Camry is Toyota Camry. However, Toyota Camry, the brand also creates Lexus, but it's a higher or upper echelon version of a Camry. So, the same thing with reverence and respect. Respect means respect. Reverence means reverence. Reverence is just a higher... Um, upper echelon vocabulary for it. So, um, the first thing is having reverence for yourself and everything else that's around you. Which means, number one, respect yourself. It don't even matter. Respect yourself and respect everything else around you. So, and what I mean by that is like, it don't matter if a person disrespects you disregard it it doesn't matter if a person is disrespectful to you in many aspects such as you know what you've done for them you know what you have completed for them you know the the struggles you went through with them you know the um, the monetary value you've invested into them you know the amount of respect you've given them you know like you, you just understand that hey i put an investment in you and this can be anyone this could be brother sister mother wife husband best friend cousin whatever but all i'm saying is is that have reverence for yourself and everyone around you or anything around you and that can be hard to do especially when you invested so much and when you have given this person pretty much your life and you respect them, but guess what? They don't respect you. That's imbalanced. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to automatically create a reaction or a response from you because we're human beings. It's going to automatically create that immediate reaction or response like, what? You know what I'm saying? You're going you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna to either be angry sometimes, you're going to respond in sorrow. You're going to feel sorry for yourself, or you're going to guilt trip yourself. You're going to be like, yo, what I did wrong. But in reality, you ain't do nothing wrong. It's them. It's them. See, when a person know that you're a good person, and when they know that you haven't done anything wrong, and I'm not saying that, Pastor Amigos, Ah, hey, stop being, stop being. Uh, Luego. But um, when you know you haven't done anything wrong, you can't allow them to guilt trip you. Because all that's doing is just breaking you down internally. And they know it. So what you do is, if they separate themselves, allow it. God is only making room for your blessing. Allow them to separate themselves. Work on you. Become a better you. Improve you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially. Because guess what? They didn't leave you. They just turned their back. Their mind is elsewhere. Meanwhile, you're going through your process. You are going up. Into, you are improving in your progress. 
as soon as you're improving your progress, they're going to be the same person with their hand out. The same person who said, I believed in you all alone. I knew you was going to do it. I just had some things going on and whatever. Nah, no, you didn't. You gave up mentally. I was less significant. I wasn't prominent anymore to you. I wasn't your, I wasn't your priority. So you got to realize when people don't have reverence towards you, but you have the utmost reverence for them. So understand what I'm saying. That's the first part. Now, the second part is although they're not giving back and they're not accepting your reverence and reciprocating it and allowing themselves to see their wrongs as well as their rights, it's, it's, you don't respond with that because the law of karma sees everything. You cannot... And you, I, pro, I promise you, you can beg a person, please, please, please. I get on my knees, I give you this. You can lick the back of their ear, rub their feet, give them a car, give them a thousand dollars, give them ten thousand dollars. You can give them anything. In the Bible, it says, you cannot speak into the ears of the foolish. You cannot speak in the ears of the foolish. You know why? Because they're foolish. They're stupid. You don't, they don't, they're not going to, they, even though you're telling them, when you speak wisdom into their ears, it's all you're saying is want, 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 That's all they hear, which means if you're truly wise, you're not even going to go back and forth with them. You're not even going to speak to them because you know the reaction that you're going to get from them. You see what I'm saying? So you got to be aware of the amount of your reverence don't let a person bring you down by them having demons that they can't fight weak weak-minded simple-minded individuals you cannot you cannot allow that although sometimes it's gonna feel like you wrong it's gonna feel like man this, what i did you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna try to search for the reasons but the truth is there's no reasons they're the reason so what you do is improve yourself, become a better you, become a better individual. And when they turn back around, you're going to be somewhere else rejoicing and not rejoicing for their calamity or their failures. No, not that, but rejoicing for your success, rejoicing because you kept faith in God and he led you the right way all along. He gave you the correct guidance. He gave you the knowledge. He gave you the wisdom, the intelligence to get through that. And sometimes it's sad to say, but the calamity is dead in your household. Sometimes it's in your house and you can't, and you can't escape it. So get what you got to do. It's similar to a prisoner that's in prison. You can't, they, can't, they can't escape the fact that they're in prison. They're in prison. They're, they are within captivity. They can't, they can't escape that. But, but guess what they can do? They can remove themselves mentally. They can remove themselves mentally. And they can take themselves back to a restaurant. They can take themselves back to the favorite place they used to always go. They can take them mentally. Mind over matter. Remember that. Mind over matter. So, so what I'm saying is, if it's in your household... Keep it pushing. Keep it moving. Read the Bible. Pray. Meditate. Remove yourself from that negativity. Remove yourself from that derogative. Remove yourself from it. And I promise you, you're going you're gonna to uphold, withstand, and become a better person. And the same individuals who left you, turned their back on you, are going to be the same exact individuals that's going to need you again. But guess what? Never treat them how they treated you. Always be, always be a better individual. And remember, having a rich mentality is equivalent and parallel to having a rich spirit and being rich in the mind. Remember that. Reno Music LLC, RenoMedia.com. We got hoodies, we got beanies, and we got t-shirts. Support the movement. Bye!